It's Wednesday, halfway through another week. Unbelievable. Glad to have you with me. This is uh, Daily Devotions with Pastor Paul, and uh, I'm so glad that you're here today. Hope that you're enjoying this week, this post-Thanksgiving week. You should uh, just about be running out of turkey now. Sound about right? You've had turkey stew, turkey egg rolls, turkey sandwiches, more turkey sandwiches, <laughs> uh, turkey uh, and gravy. Um, yeah, Thanksgiving all over again. That's that's about the way it goes. So uh, anyways, I hope you're doing well. Glad you're here. We are well into the Advent season now, preparing for Christmas. And I um, want you to know we are excited about our Christmas Eve services, 6 p.m. and 11. Um, if you're able to be in person with us, uh, that would be fantastic. If not, um, we understand and we hope you'll join us online. We're going to try and make it interactive for the kids um, or in some way, you know, engage the kids. Uh, so we're working on some, working through some ideas and we'll let you know um, well in advance before we get there, which is quickly approaching. How are you doing on your Christmas shopping? I don't, I haven't bought one gift yet, so I'm that typical guy. I Back when men went to the malls, you know, I was that guy on Christmas Eve uh, finishing out my, my Christmas shopping. But uh, anyways, here we are. We're together. Glad you're with me. Thank you for this opportunity to speak into your life. Um, we're talking about generosity. And um, I, want, I want to talk to you today about the one thing that breaks the back of materialism. There's, there's really only one way to break um, materialism. And, and, and that's generosity. Um, the way you overcome being materialistic is to become generous. So let me put a couple things in perspective for you, okay? Um, back in 2015, um, a friend of mine, Mike Sorcinelli, wrote an article and he said this. He said that, um, this is 2015, so five years ago, but probably still pretty close. If you own a car... Think about this. If you own one car, you are among the 3%, only 3% of people in the world who own a car. Many of us have two, and some of us have three, four. If you own one car, you already are in the top 3%. If you earn 37000 a year in 2015, if you earned 37000 a year, you're in the top 4%, top 4% of eight wage earners. Add just 8000 to that, 45000 a year. You ready? You're in the top 1% of people in the world at $45,000. Think about that. Think about that. Owning a car puts you in the top 3%. 37,000, you're in the top 4% of wage earners. And at 45,000 in 2000, just five years ago, you would have been in the top 1% of the whole world. And so Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and he talks about those who are wealthy. Now, you may not feel wealthy. You may feel like you have more debt than than savings. You have more debt than, you know, we, we spend more than we earn. We have a tendency to do that here in America. And you may say, well, Pastor, you know, I'm not rich. But there are 99% of the world would love to be in your position, would do just about anything to be in your position. So... Paul has some instructions for those of us who are wealthy. He says this, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud, and look at this, and not to trust in money, which is unreliable. Now, now we know it can come and go. We've watched this all around us, or we've had it happen to us this past year. 
People were making good money. All of a sudden, those jobs are gone. People who own restaurants, for instance, it's gone. Our, our movie theater here in our town, gone. Industries we thought would be around forever. Uh, you know, just gone. Money's unreliable. So Paul starts off by saying, hey, be careful. Because if you're trusting in your money, your money might not always be there. So who should we trust? And he says their trust should be in God. Look at this. Who richly gives us all we need. He doesn't stop there. I like the next line. For our enjoyment. Not, not just for us to survive. God gives us what we need to live lives that are joyful. It's a pretty good start, isn't it? Now look at the second part. Verse 18, tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. You know, we live in a materialistic world, right? Um, we're coming up on Christmas. We're doing Christmas pictures. Got to have the right clothes. Got to have the right colors. Got to have the right... Are we doing pajamas this year? Are we doing sweaters? If we're doing sweaters, are we all doing ugly sweaters? And what's that mean? We go out and we purchase things, right? Because we want a certain look. Uh, my car, it has 100,000 miles on it. It's got to go. How's it run? Great. Have any problems with it? None. Do you still owe money on it? Yeah. Why are you getting rid of it? It's got 100,000 miles on it. It's got to go. I don't want a car that has 100,000 miles on it. Right? Yeah, you know, it doesn't look as cool as the new one. Right? I was talking with my brother who just was able to buy a truck. And we were talking about my truck. And he said, you know, he asked me this question. He said, so, you know, when are you going to get a new one? Ah. He says, yeah, but the new ones have blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's cool. I like my truck. It's almost paid off. Right? None of, I'll tell you the one thing none of those trucks have. <laughs> paid in full. Right? So, why why do we get caught? Because we're materialistic. We want bigger houses, nicer boats. You know, we talk, we talk about this. So, how do we break this? How do we break this? Well, we break this by being generous. Finding needs and meeting needs. Doing it anonymously. Doing it when nobody can can give us credit for it. One of the things we're doing, again, these talks, these devotionals are not about, we hope you'll give. That's that's separate. We hope you'll give to our Christmas initiative, which we've made a specific um, uh, tab available for you on our giving app. Uh, platforms uh christmas offering 20 or 2020 christmas offering or offering christmas offering 2020 so why do we want to we want to give our money away to the christian and the children's impact network because they're building an orphanage for kids these kids are never going to know us they're never going to be able to give us a thank you so but here's the deal generosity generosity isn't something that you could take credit for because the our church did it generosity is individual yeah, you know, we're going to make a big deal. We're going to say, yes, Shoreline Community Church did this. And, and that's because, but it doesn't happen unless we do it as individuals. It doesn't happen unless we give. So whether it's the Children's Impact Network or you find a, a cause that you can be a part of, you find a family in the church that doesn't have this year and, and you take care of their needs. You find a couple that's struggling and you you are generous to them. You you see kids who, who you know, toys for tots or, or whatever um, it is, you, you are generous. So I want to give you three things that generosity does. Number one, we already said this a couple times over. It breaks the chains of, of materialism. So I, I start to see money not as something just for me. As I give more, now, we talked yesterday about generosity isn't just in, in finances, okay? It's our time, it's our talent, and our treasure. So if I'm giving time, right? If I'm being generous with my time, I find a need in the church and I jump in. I, I just jump in. I don't sit and... I jump in. I see a need in the community. I jump 
in. I see a need at the school. I jump in. I'm generous with my time. Okay, so let's let's be let's be very clear. When we talk about generosity, we're not just talking about money, but money's the big the big block for so many of us, right? Jesus talked about money more than anything else because he realized something. If God can get our wallet, God can have right where our treasure, where our heart is, there our treasure is also, right? So where we, what we treasure is what we invest in. And so we hoard and we keep and we maintain our money at all costs. And God says, listen, if I can get a hold of your finances, I, I, I'll have the rest of you because your finance, it's the biggest grip on us. Some of you, when you hear generosity, God, Right now, as I'm talking, there are some of you, you're frustrated right now because we're talking about money. I'm not frustrated. You're frustrated. What's that say to you? Want to break the, that chain, that frustration in your life? Be generous. Can I tell you who is not frustrated as they watch this, this devotional? Generous people. Look, he's right on. Yeah, pastor, come on. Right, so so it breaks the the chain of materialism. As I give away, and I give away more, and I give away more, time, talent, treasure, all of those things. I become more generous, and it breaks the the chain of materialism. Look at this second two makes you happy, right? Acts twenty verse thirty five. Paul says, "I'm I'm quoting Jesus." Right? It's more blessed to give than to receive. When we give. There's joy in giving. When, when you come and you serve at the church, right? You get done and you go, wow, I felt good. There was something about being an usher. There was something about being a greeter. There was something about being a parking attendant. There was something about being on the worship team. There's something about being on the sound team. There's something about working with children. There's something about working with teenagers. There's something about, right, going to the, 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 um, um, the community kitchen. When you're done... God, that feels good. Generosity, generosity makes you happy. Using your talent, whatever that may be, for kingdom's sake and for the betterment of others makes you happy. There's something about it. Okay. Can I tell you this? Financially, financially, number three, not only does it make you happy, not only does it break the chains of material. Listen, here's what here's what generosity does financially and, and and emotionally and physically. Generosity creates margin. Right? Creates especially financial, it creates financial margin. Here's why. Because when I'm generous, I am going to be more selective with how I spend my money. When I when I create space to be generous, here's what happens. Financially, I create space. And I'm a better um, I'm a, I'm a better manager of my of God's finances. And so when I make generosity a priority, I create my budget around the fact that I want to be generous. You know what it does? Because it's breaking the, the, the chains of materialism, I'm spending less money on a new TV. I'm spending less money on getting that new new boat. I'm spending less, right? Nothing wrong with those things. But when I make generosity the priority, what happens inevitably is I become more responsible with what I have. Because I want to, I want to give more away. And so I... I I manage God's money better. Okay, so those three things again. Generosity breaks the chains of materialism. It makes us happy. Thirdly, it um, creates margin. So come on, let's be generous. Let's, let's, let's allow God to change. Let's allow God to change us and um, allow his, his generosity to flow through us. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, your grace. Thank you so much that the most generous person in all of history is you. What did you give? You gave your one and only son. And you continue to give and you lavish good gifts on us. 
So Lord, I just pray during this holiday season that we would be generous as well, that we would love people, your people, your creation, generously. Thank you, Father, for our time together. I pray your blessing upon each person as they go about their activities today. In Christ's name, amen. I'm sorry. I try to get these done quicker than this. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow.